السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر سید سجاد حسین ریزوی ویلکم ٹو دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف چیپٹر نمبر ون انٹروڈکشن ٹو کمپیوٹر سسٹمس ان دس پارٹ آف دا لیکچر وی ول لک ان ٹو دا ان سائڈس آف دا کمپیوٹر سسٹمس اسپیسیفکلی وی ول لرن اباؤٹ دا بیسک کمپوننٹس بیسک انگریڈینٹس آف اے کمپیوٹر سسٹمس دس انکلوڈس بٹ ناٹ لمیٹیڈ ٹو دا ہارڈ ویئر سافٹ ویئر ڈیٹا اینڈ دا یوزر In addition, we will also learn about the different types of the hardware, different types of the software and the types of the user and data as well. Primarily, there are four parts of a computer, four basic dimensions of a computer. In a computer system, we have hardware, we have variety of hardware. Hardware are the electronic devices that transforms the data into information, store the data, it communicates the data, it fetch the data, it outputs the data. So we have different types of a hardware, but actually the hardware is the electronic component. Our monitor is a hardware, our keyboard is a hardware, a printer is a hardware, modem is a hardware, processor is a hardware, hard drive is a hardware, mouse is a hardware. So we have hardware means it is an electronic component. Software is a set of instruction, is not actually the physical uh, component. It is a virtual component or a logical component. And we call it a software has the set of instructions. These are the instructions that are required to drive the hardware. Means hardware cannot work itself on its own, but it need instructions to be executed, to be Uh, operational and those instructions are provided by the software software needs the data because a software itself cannot do anything but it fetch the data and based on the data based on the instructions it instruct the hardware and finally the user a user is a person who used to provide the instruction who used to provide the instruction to the computer So we can say that user provide instruction or data. Data will be provided to the software. Software use that data and drives the hardware. So these all the four, four components are interrelated in fashion. By definition, as I've uh, told, uh, hardware is a device, a mechanical, physical device that can be touched. It, is our, it could be a mechanical device, it could be the electronic device, uh, it could be the electromechanical device, it could be an optical device, it could be a magnetic device. So we have a hardware as a physical device. A software that has the instruction, it is also called a program. It drives the hardware. It tells the computer what to do. It tells the hardware what to do. There are many software, thousands of software programs are available. A data is a raw facts and figures. It is a uh, data that is provided by the user and the computer is supposed to transform that data into an information. And obviously user could be a human or it could be another computer. because another computer can also provide data to the other computer. So a user provides an instruction, a command, a data to the computer, means user provide data, data is drived or fetched by the software and it drives the hardware. The process of transforming a data into an information is first we fetch the data and we call fetching of data is termed as the input. We have different hardwares for the input like keyboard, mouse, mic. This input instructions, input data will be forwarded to the processing hardware. A processing hardware does the job of transforming a data into an information. After transforming a data into an information, that information will be again displayed uh, to the user by the use of output hardware. It could be a printer, it could be a speaker, or it could be a monitor or LCD. At the same time, that data would be stored on the storage media. It could be your hard drive, it could be your CD. 
So these are the four steps of transforming a data into an information. We call it information processing cycle. In information processing cycle, we have four phases. Input of a data, processing of a data and transforming it into information. Display the information to the user and store the information. So these are the four processes of uh, our information processing cycle. There are few essential ingredients of a computer like we have memory, we have memory in the form of a RAM, we have processor, we have input devices like my, uh, mic or the uh, speaker, mic or a, a keyboard or a mouse. We have output hardware like a speaker, like uh, LCD or LED or CRT and the printer. A processing hardware is actually the brain of a computer. We take processor as uh, the processing hardware. A processor has the capability to fetch the instruction and execute the instruction. Means, if we say that processor has two basic work. Pehla, instruction ko fetch karke leke aana, data ko fetch karna aur data ko manipulate ya execute karna. We call it a central processing unit. Aage chal ke hum isko par baat karenge ki why we are calling it central processing unit. Hum isko khali processing unit kyu nahi kehte, iske upar hum detail mein aage baat karenge. In a computer we can have a single processor or we can have a multiple processors like uh, jo current jo recent hamare paas processors hai core to quad hai core uh, core i3 hai core i5 means we have multiple parallel processors in it and we call it a secondary processor uh, we can also call secondary processor as a graphic processor or a math core processor means a processor that is in addition to the main processor aur usko kisi khas kaam ke liye rakha gaya for example graphics ke liye istemal kiya hai ya isko signal processing ke liye istemal kar rahe hain ya isko gaming ke liye istemal kar rahe hain jaise aap graphic card agar lagate hain system mein to graphic card ka apna ek built in processor hai in addition to your main processor to we call it a secondary processor processors are made up of silicon and the copper uh, as a semiconductor uh, hardware we have two types uh, of uh, storage one we call it a memory and another is storage a memory is a internal memory terms referred as the internal memory of a system internal memory of a system we have ram we have rom we have cache we have registers these are the internal memories they have their different characteristics jo aage chal ke hum detail mein baat karenge rom why we are calling it a random access memory. We call it random access memory because its access method is random. Its nature is volatile, like if uh, the RAM is reset or supplied is off, it won't store the data. Like for example, you run a computer on different applications, if the system ki light off ho jai, supply off, ho jai, all your data would be discarded unless aapne usko secondary storage media pe so save na kiya ho processor is supposed to communicate with the ram processor ram ke through communicate karta hai to ram is actually a communication channel for the processor there are few instructions that uh, must be read by the processor on startup or a few essential information jaise aapke computer mein bios hai so we uh, store all the information, all the essential information that needs to be executed, we place it in a ROM. Just like you have your mobile phone, your firmware is Android or iOS, the firmware is also in a ROM. कि जैसे ही आप अपनी मोबाइल डिवाइस को ऑन करते हैं, वो सबसे पहले ROM से इंस्ट्रक्शन उठाता है और RAM के थ्रू प्रोसेसर को देता है और आपका फर्मवेयर बूट होता है या आपका एंड्रॉइड का सॉफ्टवेयर ऑन होता है। 
we have some input devices that allows the user to interact with the system like keyboard mouse uh, these are the input devices like a scanner microphone they all are the input devices output devices like monitor printer a speaker there are some other input output devices like touch screen like ocr like omr jo aage se chal ke hum separate in ke upar input output devices ke upar jo chapter hai उसमें हम डिटेल में इनकी फंक्शनैलिटी इनके इंटरनल आर्किटेक्चर को डिस्कस करेंगे वी हैव सेकेंडरी स्टोरेज मीडिया एज मैग्नेटिक स्टोरेज मीडिया जिसमें योर फ्लॉपीज योर हार्ड ड्राइव योर मैग्नेटिक टेप्स आर द मैग्नेटिक स्टोरेज मीडिया वी हैव ऑप्टिकल स्टोरेज मीडिया लाइक सी डी डी वी डीज एंड अदर ऑप्टिकल स्टोरेज मीडिया एंड अदर स्टोरेज मीडिया वी हैव वी कॉल इट अ सेमी कंडक्टर स्टोरेज मीडिया और वी कॉल इट एस एस डी a basic difference between the primary storage media and the secondary storage media is primary storage media holds a small amount of data and usually that data is volatile like in case of ram cache and uh, registers a data is volatile yani supply of the data off but we can store a data permanently uh, for a long time on the storage device on the secondary storage media तो यहाँ हमने बात की कि दो स्टोरेज मीडिया है प्राइमरी और सेकेंडरी सेकेंडरी इज़ फॉर लॉन्ग टर्म स्टोरेज प्राइमरी इज़ फॉर द इंस्टेंटेनियस स्टोरेज और टेम्प्रेरी स्टोरेज सॉफ्टवेयर इज अ डिवाइस दैट सॉफ्टवेयर होल्ड्स द इंस्ट्रक्शन अ सॉफ्टवेयर कैन बी कैटेगराइज इन टू अ सिस्टम सॉफ्टवेयर और एप्लीकेशन सॉफ्टवेयर ऑल द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम आर द सिस्टम सॉफ्टवेयर all the software that are specifically written for some application we call it application software system software carry out multiple tasks like memory management like input output management like user interaction like parsing there are multiple set of operations that are the responsibility of a system software your windows is a system software your firmware is a system software second is application software these application softwares are written for some specific applications like media player is application software microsoft word is application software browser is application software means they are only designated to to carry out some set of applications not a multiple set of applications as the system software Uh, as far as the data is concerned it is uh, uh, facts figures numbers symbols that do not has uh, any uh, interpretation any inferencing once we transform a data into an information then that information would be useful a data can be organized into the file it is stored in the form of a binary since we are using digital systems therefore we use a binary data binary data means a data can be stored in a form of ones and zeros a computer user as i have told earlier it could be the human that uh, set up the system install the software manages a file maintaining the system these are some of the core responsibility of the human user a system could be termed as the userless systems means it could be a autonomous system it could be a automated system that do not needs a user but it runs it on its own self like for example surveillance system are autonomous systems some industrial systems are autonomous systems like uh, your uh, if you uh, use air condition with the mated system uh, air condition could use it could be operated without the user intervention we can meet it on auto mode means uh, autopilot systems are the userless systems so a system that do not need a user command but it is programmed it is trained then we call it a userless computer so this comes to end of uh, part 2 of chapter number 1 in this uh, i just summarize all the stuff of uh, this part in this part we have learned about, about uh, there are four basic dimensions of a computer hardware software user and data user is supposed to provide data to the uh, 
software, uh, a software fetch that data and then transform it into an information and this transformation is could be done by the processing hardware it could be stored into the hardware so these are the four basic dimensions of a system a hardware could be of multiple type it could be the processing hardware input hardware output hardware communication hardware like modem and LAN card uh, it could be uh, like uh, software could be a uh, system software or it could be the application software the software for uh, system software is uh, for uh, operating the system that's why we call it operating system and the uh, application software is uh, for some specific application like Microsoft Word and the media player are the application software a system could be a user dependent system or it could be a userless system means if uh, it needs a user to be op uh, operate, operated or it could be an autonomous systems so this is a brief conclusion about uh, the part 2 of a chapter number 1 thank you